All right, good morning. It is uh it is the Friday after Thanksgiving. We just got our paperwork uh got everything sorted out to swap the tag over from the Mac to this. The whole IRP if the nightmare. I'm out here trying to uh swap this uh blow off valve for this um for this air dryer i finally got the o-ring out what a nightmare that was let me shut this thing up um i had to take a punch and a hammer and put it on the oh on the ring the snap ring i finally got that out one of you guys mentioned in the comment section to take the ring out and then start the truck up and let the air build up and it would blow that thing out. So we're gonna give that a shot. Guess I won't be doing that because the battery's dead. I don't know what's killing the battery in this thing. I did end up installing the uh, battery charger that we had um installed in the mac in the uh, little toolbox area i put that back here next to the inverter but i didn't have it plugged in but i mean we took this truck in to get the uh to get another annual inspection done on the trailer yesterday was it yesterday so what's killing this battery the only thing I could think would be this new inverter that we put in here. And we've, we've got our freezers and stuff all unplugged. I don't think I left anything on. I mean, that is supposed to shut everything off on the truck before it gets to this point. But I don't... I don't know if this uh, new inverter did. Kind of hard to see because I've stuck it behind the seat here. But I get everything back there. I don't know. I guess we'll let this thing charge up a little bit. We'll be back. I'll go drink some coffee. Also, uh, we just recently uh, released the uh, Amish video where we got lost in the country. And a lot of you guys are like, uh, oh, buy Rand McNally, buy Rand McNally. Why didn't you trip plan? Buy Rand McNally. Is the Rand McNally gonna tell me if my semi truck can make a turn? Cause I guess I didn't make that clear in the video. The road was a little more than this truck wide. I would have to get over and let horse and buggies go by. Or they would get over and then I would go by. And then the trouble that we were having with the Garmin, everyone's like, oh, update it, update it. This, uh, we update this thing. I check for updates on this thing every single day. And this is what we deal with every single day. Every single day, there's something wrong with this Garmin. <laughs> moments later Well, that didn't work. Now I'm terrified to go around the truck. Afraid it's gonna uh, explode out of there. I'll just have to wiggle it out by hand. All right, I couldn't get the old one out. I uh, started the truck up, the air wouldn't blow it out. I went under there, tapped on it with a hammer, I put some pliers on it, wiggled, 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 wiggled. I could not get the old one out. 
So I searched on Google and a TikTok popped up and a guy showed his truck doing the same exact thing and all, all he did was took a 10 millimeter and stuck a 10 millimeter down in there and then tighten that up just a little bit and I guess that adjusts the valve somehow and that stops the air from blowing out so that's what I did does that still sound like there's air? I might have to adjust it some more alright that fixed that problem I just had to tighten it up a little bit more I replaced this leveling valve Oh, looks like that's starting to work now. I kind of hear some air. Need to get some soapy water and check that. Honestly, I need to go through my whole trailer too. I think I got a valve on the on the back of the trailer on that dump valve thing that I put on there. I still need to run a uh, power switch from the truck for that to dump that as well. Yeah. You get some soapy water. You're going to go into the store? Yeah. I got a mess to clean up. I'm trying to get this thing ready to go out again. All right, good morning. It is a week after Thanksgiving now. I hope everybody had a, a fantastic holiday. I know we did. Um, it took us a little bit to get all the uh, tags situated with the uh, truck, swapping over the whole IRP deal. But uh, we are up and ready now. We've got, uh, we've got some loads ahead of us. Uh, last night I jumped on the board and found um, some loads in Tallahassee going 40 miles. 15 loads a day for three days, Monday through Wednesday. 400 bucks a load for 40 miles. So, uh, broker gave us three loads a day. So we have three loads a day we get to go do. It's supposed to be uh, a load of crane mats. What sucks is I, uh, I kinda drug my feet the whole holiday. Just kinda just taking it easy, you know? Always planned on washing this, washing the trucks while we were home the ford was absolutely disgusting because we had it parked underneath the trees but uh i ended up having to wash this thing in the uh in the rain yesterday both of them i was like i, I have to wash these trucks i want to wash them got our new truck numbers on here our last truck was um 145 i made this one uh 1776 because america you know anyways just finishing up pre-trip now and uh We'll see you guys in Tallahassee. Well, technically we didn't have this load because um, we followed for this company a bunch. But what a lot of these uh, what a lot of these companies want now is like you have to have so many inspections within like six months. Since we're a one truck operation, like it's really hard to you know like they just don't pull us in to inspect us. So. They asked for references, so we gave them the references. We basically just gave them all, you know, a list of all the loads that we've recently done for these other brokers. They've been trying to call these other brokers. They can't get the brokers on the line. Uh, we are uh, about 45 minutes from Tallahassee, and he just called in and was like, look, I, you know, I gotta get these loads covered. Which, I mean, I understand, but at the same time, it's like, I asked him, you know, it's like, what about all the other loads that we've done for you guys? Like, does that mean nothing? And it, it means nothing. So we lost those loads. We don't we don't we don't have those loads now. It pisses me off. I bet those are the crane mats right there. Yeah. So we get to turn around and go home. Well, we ended up getting back this morning at, uh, I don't even remember what time we got back. We ended up getting stuck behind that uh, super load. They blocked the road for about an hour and a half.
uh, right before you get on 10 there, they blocked, they, they blocked that road. I guess they were waiting on Florida State Patrol to close down the interstate so that they could get it onto the interstate. There was enough room for them to actually pull on the ramp to get ready to go on the interstate, but they were just... Selfish, honestly. There was enough room for them there, but they backed up, backed up traffic. And we couldn't go anywhere. There was one of those like curved concrete dividers down the middle. Anyways, we get home. Um, it is now... It is now 2.48. I've been in the truck. I didn't even take the computer out of the truck. I've been sitting in the truck all day looking for a load. Hoping I could just find something and I wouldn't have to worry about moving my computer back and forth. Well, I get to get out and go in the house to check on Lita. And as I'm sitting here, this crack catches my eye. We have a crack in our windshield. And I remember the other day we heard something hit what sounded like this pillar, but nothing happened. And I think what happened was when I washed the truck the other day, I think I might have gotten some water in the windshield. And just the cold air this morning, me turning on the defrosters, I think it cracked the windshield over. It wasn't even like that, honestly, when uh, we got home. I didn't notice that. So, you can see where a little bitty pebble is headed. Or I say a little pebble. But there's like, there's like a little rock chip right here. So, I ran up to Walmart. I tried to get on Safe Light and see how much a new windshield was. And for some reason, my VIN number, it says my VIN number's wrong. Just trying to see how much a windshield is. So I ran up to Walmart. We got this uh, windshield saver repair kit. It was like 11 bucks. We're gonna see if we can at least stop this thing from cracking. And uh, hopefully buy us some time. I don't know, I've never used one of these before. I watched a brief, uh, a brief video on it. Basically you have to take this little, um, Comes with like a little thumbtack. You're supposed to take this little thumbtack and like get all the little chips of glass out. It's kind of in a bad area for me too here because I'm gonna have to step on this step and then kind of hang out, hang out of the truck here. And uh, oh, there's definitely some stuff in there. Looks like you want want that hole directly over it. Oh, I don't know if that's gonna work. I might have messed that up already. Cause this other disc. Oh yeah, it looks like this other disc has it to where you can uh Bend this back just in case it's on this edge here. See, so you can take and uh, let me uh, make sure we don't have any air bubbles here. Comes with this razor blade, I guess, to either clean this uh, sticky stuff off your windshield, or maybe we're just going to use this to uh, help Hunter Biden out. This is what it looks like so far. I guess I could have done a better job than that. But what we're gonna have to do is cut the corner off of this plastic piece a little bit. So we'll take this razor blade that they gave us. 
cut the corner of this off. So that's gonna be this corner. We'll do it in a way that's very dangerous. You always wanna drag the the razor blade towards you. That way, if it slips, you can just cut your jugular and you don't have to worry about trucking anymore. Ugh. Yes, I'm in a bad mood. All right. Just a little bit more. Ugh. You know what they say. Measure once, cut 16 times, and then lose your razor blade and have to... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm in such a bad mood. That was uh that was a whole week's worth of work that we that we lost this morning and I just can't This whole this whole uh needing 6 DOT inspections. No, 3 DOT inspections in 6 months worth of time is just crazy. It is absolutely nuts. We haven't had an inspection since we switched to, to, to semi truck in the hot shot you guys know we had like 16 our first year all right i think we got this now let's see here so that's gonna go like that. So we're gonna peel this off now. And we're gonna stick this. On it like that. You smack it real good. So it helps break your windshield some more. And then I think you take this syringe here. You want to suck the air out of this thing. Uh, remove backing bar, remove cap, and cut off tip of resin tube. Wait. Align pedestal with disc cab and press firmly. Remove cap and cut off tip of resin tube. Place resin tube quarter inch into pedestal. I'm pretty sure we're supposed to suck the air out. That seems weird to me that we would add the resin and then suck the air out. But, what do I know? I've lost my razor blade again. So we're gonna cut the tip off this thing. And I guess what that does is that sucks the air up through the resin so that the air can't go back in. And you're supposed to let it sit like this for 10 minutes. Closest to the bottom of the plunger. After 10 minutes, temporarily remove spring from pedestal to allow air to flow into syringe. Keep plunger locked in second notch. Carefully place syringe back in pedestal holding syringe with one hand. Gently push the plunger down and lock in plunger at first notch. All right, so I'll see you guys in 10 minutes. See it uh, sucking air bubbles right here. You can see where the uh, resin has been pushed in about an inch from this plunger, and then it looks like it was pushing out of the crack right here. I don't know if that's gonna show up or not, but it's not pushing it all the way in. But I think... If we can get this thing to stop cracking, that's probably the uh, that's probably the idea. There went my new glasses. Great. So now it is. 
we uh, scrape that thing off and put this uh, clear little shield on there and let the let the sun cook it. Good morning. It is Wednesday now. I have been striking out on the load board. I, I just can't bring myself to, to haul cheap freight. So we've decided I called Hey Guy Diesel and they're going to go ahead and do the overhead for us and um, rebuild the fuel pump. These uh, these trucks are known to like have uh, fuel pumps basically basically explode. how to dump my axle on this thing I disconnected from the truck we were getting ready to go take it I was like hey I called him up and she's like let us know you know because we'll have to order the parts for your fuel pump I was like all right woke up this morning called him but come to find out they're not going to be working um, Thursday and Friday so basically when I dropped the truck off they won't be able to get to it until Monday and I didn't realize that so that's kind of a bummer so I've just been kind of keeping an eye on the load board and um, you know just looking for some local some local work to do I need to bring my airbags back up uh, just to kind of make a couple bucks until uh, until we can take this thing to Hey Guy Diesel in uh, Griffin, Georgia, for them to do the overhead and redo the fuel pump. And um, we just found a load that we'll go pick up here in Valdosta, and then um, it's going to be a boom lift from a rental company. We'll pick it up in Valdosta and then drop it in Brunswick, Georgia. It's only 120 miles. Um, it's like, a, like 600 bucks. So technically I could drive there and then drive back and uh, make, this is probably the broker. Hello. Uh, I, think, I think my wife might be pulling it out right now. Okay, yeah, we'll give him a ring. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Bye bye. Wonder if we got the uh, rake on. Um, yeah, let me get this hooked up and uh, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. All right. Sorry about the uh, distracted explanation. Uh, explanation. Explanation there. Uh, so we were going to take it to Haggy. Ends up they're not going to work Thursday and Friday. It's like, well, let me just find a couple little short runs and put a couple dollars in the pocket, maybe go buy a steak dinner or something like that. Um, gonna get overhead done and the fuel pump rebuilt. And then, uh, we'll just go pick up this boom lift today and then deliver it in the morning. Maybe we can find something from Br Brunswick. Maybe back this way. And then we'll have to take this truck to uh, do my tug test. Oh yeah. Uh, we'll have to drop it off at Haggy Diesel or Hey Guy Diesel, however you say it, um, before Monday. Probably just take it up there and drop it off. We're working on it Monday. Hopefully have it done Tuesday. And then we'll have to leave out and try to make some money before Christmas. It's it's not looking like it's gonna be a very jolly Christmas this year. I just can't bring myself to haul this cheap crap on the boards. I can't do it. Even to like get me out. I can't be like, I'll, I'll just take a hit. And by a hit, I mean like $1.50 loads going to like, not even good places really. I found like, a load or two going up towards like Illinois, Indiana for like 
close to two bucks a mile. But holy smokes, that's still, that's still terrible, man. Ugh. Anyways, we're gonna shoot over, pick us up a boom lift. You got the address, baby? Yeah. And uh, we'll see you there. All right, they had this thing listed as 45,000 pounds. I said, I've never seen a 45,000 pound boom lift. I'm sure it's not that. They're just trying to keep the hot shots away. No, this is a, uh, a 45,000 pound boom lift. So it's a good thing we didn't fill up on fuel because she's heavy. Because she's heavy, we threw a bunch of extra chains on this big old girl. She's a big girl. We gotta do the basket still. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta strap the basket down. All right, let me strap this down. And uh, I don't want to put this on my street. For one thing, that's a lot of weight on these axles and the way I got to turn out of my neighborhood. I don't like having a heavy load on my trailer in my neighborhood because the way I have to kick them real hard. So we, we need to figure out something to do with this truck and trailer. Uh, till then, I know a lot of you guys are like, I can't believe they let you park your your truck on the street. Bro, most of Georgia, you park on the street. A lot of people here, a lot of people around the world don't even have a, a driveway. So, what you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, Willis? People all up in your feelings. I'm not in your neighborhood. Keep it up. I'll start dating your mom, and then I'll park in your neighborhood too. I don't like this basket. Hmm. All right, basket strapped. We got our chains on. Uh, for some reason, we can't back up anymore. Oh, I got a chain. Did they take the chain off the trailer? We can't back up anymore to take the blocks out. So I'm gonna have to drive over these things. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right, let's let's get out of here, woman. Huh? Yeah. 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 Those, uh, that yellow shirt really brings out the color in your eyes. Yeah, right. You can't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning. We uh, parked at the race race track. We could not find where to park this thing, and we did not want to take it to the house because of how much this thing weighs. I didn't want to have to like twist the axles in our neighborhood and this is a big old girl. Yeah. It's 6.30 in the morning. I talked to this guy in front of us before we left yesterday. I was like, hey, are you staying the night? He's like, yeah, why? Well, I was like, cause I'm gonna park behind you. I don't want to look like that butthole that's out in the middle of nowhere all night long. So I'm glad to see he's still here. He said he'd be gone by now though. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe his alarm Yeah, I don't know. You think we should wake him up? No. <laughs> all right, so we got to get this thing going. I need to check all the air pressure in the uh, trailer tires because she's heavy. I'm worried that uh, I might be over on my trailer axis because of all that weight being back there. I mean, it's long, but that's as far forward as we could pull it. So I guess we'll have to see. Um, being that we live here in Valdosta, we never really think about parking here. Uh, so it was kind of weird to uh, have to find parking. All right, it's cold. It is cold. It's cold. Let's get to work.
we have arrived in Brunswick, Georgia. They said this is not the biggest boom lift they have. And this is 45,000 pounds. We're just in the yard here. I gotta wait on this truck to move because I don't think I could make it around them. I mean, I probably could, but twisting these axles even in that dirt, I just don't wanna do. So I'm gonna let this guy finish up with whatever he's doing. The crack in our windshield's getting a little longer, so I think I'm gonna drill stop this thing and then refill it, go get another one and refill this. I don't know how much this windshield would be, so I'm, I'm terrified. It's been replaced before. I don't know. It's got that sticker on there that looks kind of old. I, I, I feel like this. I feel like this windshield was new when we got it. Like you could still see like. They got all that junk. All look at all that. Yeah, but that's probably from factory, to be honest. I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna let this truck move. I don't see anything on the board going back towards the way. I'll probably check one more time. Bell, Florida. 45,000 pounds, Pooler, Georgia to Bell, Florida. But after you add up all the all the deadhead to Pooler, 75, and then to drive home from Bell, Florida to Valdosta is another 100 miles. It's just not worth it for 800 bucks after that. Honestly, I shouldn't have taken this load that we're on now. It's, uh... I don't know. It was in Valdosta. It was in Valdosta. I, honestly, what we should have done was picked it up this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than pick it up yesterday. I picked it up yesterday because it seemed like the broker was like... Even though they're like, oh, yeah, it can be picked up today or tomorrow and it needs to be dropped by Friday. I'm like, okay, well, I'll pick it up tomorrow. He's like, oh, you're going to get it tomorrow? I'm like... Or I could do it today if you guys need it picked up today. I mean, they, they probably didn't need it, but he wants it moved as fast as possible. Yeah. I'm like, all right, if I pick it up today, I'm not going to I'm not gonna do the drive till tomorrow. I'm like, if I can sleep in my own bed, I want to sleep in my own bed. So that's what we did. And we stayed up late. <laughs> stayed up late being nerds. Lita's got me playing the game again. <laughs> Between that and then editing, it's just been full of fun, huh? Mm -hmm. Ugh. All right, well, we're gonna wait for this truck to move and then back up to that dock. We'll get this thing unloaded and I guess just drive home. There isn't anything on the board. I don't see anything worth it. Yeah. I mean, there's that belt. I mean, what's going to happen? We go, we deadhead the Pooler, Georgia. We pick that up, and then we drive the bell. Would they let us drop today? That's another thing. Or do I have to go home with a load on my trail, and they want tarps on it? Mm. Honestly, when we bought these tarps, and I bought these these tarps... I bought six foot drop tarps. I wish I would have bought eight foot drop tarps. We miss out on a lot of loads because we only have six foot drop tarps. And honestly, with the parachute drop tarps, they're super light. The extra two feet, we probably wouldn't even have noticed. I don't know. I just wasn't sure how light the parachute tarps were gonna be. Yeah. And that's back when like my back was bothering me. I mean, it still bothers me now, but like it was really bothering me back then. I mean, I think that epidural made a huge difference. Yeah. And I wish I had the money. I would go ahead and go get another one, and I, I would hope it would help it even more. Like, it was fantastic during that the epidural part. I mean, after it wore off, it just it was never as bad as it was. I think that nerve was just, like, mad. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if this guy's going to load this truck or, or what's going on here. Did you ask him no. about using the ramp? No. Maybe I'll walk up there and actually walk around that truck and see how much room's up there. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. All right.
Hey, right, we are getting unloaded. And I didn't mention to you guys, but uh, we got back to the truck this morning and it was super cold. Uh, we ended up getting a um, jump pack. They are not a sponsor. Uh, farm. Um, uh, what's that guy's name? Farm. Uh, guy on YouTube I watch. Farm. Project Farm. Project Farm. See? That's why I keep you around. Project Farm reviewed this thing. And I went through the reviews. And uh, everybody in the reviews is like, I have the Gulu 4000. And I've jumped my semi truck off with it before. It was on sale for like 70 bucks. Um, I was like, right, I'll give it a shot. Sure enough, we got there this morning. Semi truck was dead. We had to use this. Shame on Kenworth. We had to take the steps off this morning. That was kind of a pain in the butt. So stupid. I was like, oh, I'll just hook it up to the inverter. To the inverter leads? I couldn't get to the inverter. It's a pain in the butt to get to behind the seat. So we took the step off, hooked it up, fired right up. This thing just now wouldn't start. Hooked this thing up, fired right up. He did. That's what he did. Is that throwing you off? <laughs> oh, I got you. I'm sorry. Oh, I got you. Yeah. So that was uh, Amazon, like 70 bucks. Already saved us. I told you guys we needed a jump box. Nobody had listened to me. Robert, you don't need a jump box. I mean, we used to have a jump box. We did. I used to have something that looked like this. And when my battery would be dead on my on my uh, DJI, oh. I left this thing up with the camera and the camera plugged into this. Because my other one had a USB. Yeah, this one has a USB as well. And uh, I left it up there, drove off when we had the Ford. This, this thing was on the side of the interstate somewhere. It's it probably Lita's fault because she forgot it up there. I don't even think you were on. It was when I was in Utah. I remember. I was in Utah somewhere. Yeah. Uh, we'll get this thing unloaded and I guess we're going home. Lita can't find us the load. No. Why not? I don't know. Come on. There's nothing. Get to work. Nothing. out of here. There's nothing. Well, you know what? I was looking and if we wanted to go somewhere. It is coming out. There's there is stuff coming out of here. But Yeah, that thing is that thing is heavy, man. That thing is ridiculously heavy. Um, yeah, but we have to go. Hold on, we gotta go to Haggy Diesel. Hey guy diesel. Yeah. We wanna get that uh, valve train adjusted and uh, the fuel pump rebuilt before it costs us even more money. All right, we'll get this thing unloaded. We gotta air this thing back up. Yeah, I just wanna let you guys know. I mean, Project Farm did a review on this and a bunch of other ones. This was the cheapest and honestly had the best reviews. Um, a lot of people told me to get um, the jump box, uh, the same company that makes our battery charger. Um, let me see, who makes our battery charger? But I did a lot of looking on that, and that has a lot of bad reviews. Let me see who makes that thing. Ugh. Ugh. That is a... Uh... The Genesis. The NOCO. The NOCO Genesis. NOCO Genesis makes a uh, jumper pack. It's like $350, $400. And I was looking it up, and there's a lot of people having issues with it, like, shortly after a year. I'm like, I can't justify 400 bucks, and they have issues shortly after a year. All right, let me get this cleaned up. We'll see you guys uh, later. If not, thanks for watching.